Hey, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm glad you decided to stop by. This is Crafting with Cami. Today I have a double page layout share for you. Um, as you can see, I have already started by cutting down a piece of white daisy and I've mounted it on some Sundance. And I did gut that so I can use that on another project. So my white is adhered down. I only left the border on three of the sides so that when they go in my postbound album, it'll look like one layout. The photos I am documenting are actually just from last week. My husband and I went out on the paddle boards. We also went for a hike. So around the lake we were on, our hiking trails. So I kind of went overboard and I printed a ton of photos. Look at all of these. I haven't counted them. I don't know how many I have here. 12 photos. We're doing 12 photos today on a double page layout. I have been seeing a lot of collage style layouts lately and it's really inspired me to come up with my own. So these were all on the exact same day, just minutes apart from each other. We got off the lake and we went for a hike. So um, I wanted to bring in some of the green, so I have some pine that I'll be using. I also wanted to bring in some of the brown from those trees, and that is going to be my mocha. I have some mocha that I'll bring in, and then sapphire just to bring in some more blues, and um, you'll see my embellishments here in a moment as to why I chose sapphire. But that'll be my color palette. I wanted to bring in some Sundance, one for the embellishments that I'll be bringing in here in a moment. And I just thought it kind of brightened it up. My photos are somewhat dark. These were taken, well, it's almost spring now. So it's still kind of chilly outside, hence the long sleeves. Um, and it's not it's not summer yet. It's not very sunny. You can kind of see it's more cloudy in the photos. So I just wanted to bring in some more brightness. Um, I do have some brighter colors in my shirt back there. So that might kind of make that pop more that, as I bring in some more of that Sundance. I'll lay out the photos in kind of the orientation that I was thinking. So I thought I could do these two up top here have one down here I kind of like how these two were both facing in um, same with this one my husband's facing inward Okay, so this is kind of what I'm thinking. Something like this, and I will have them all touching and overlapping and just creating kind of that cluster. I might bring this one down here so my title has a resting spot. I don't want to cover too much of my photos or the background, so I might actually go something like this so that where it's overlapping my photo. And then I was thinking of bringing in mocha for my, my mats, and I only want to mat a few of them. They do all have the white border around already. I printed them with that, um, but I just want to have a few stand out. So this one I kind of want to stand out because my husband is facing inward. I could bring this one down or frame this one but I'm actually kind of looking out that way so ideally I'm I might end up moving this over here but I've kind of liked how I'm circling these together but I do want this one to stand out since he is facing the correct orientation same with this one I am facing that way I may end up moving that let's see what it would look like over here but then both of these are facing that way so I think I do prefer that and then I thought I could mat this one and then maybe this one so then my mats are kind of making your eye travel across the page the mocha color and then I have 
I have cut down some pine and sapphire. So what I'm thinking is having the pine down here. And I did cut that to be 11 and a half wide so that I can see my yellow frame. And then the width of this is four inches. And then the sapphire I cut a little shorter, so that is three inches. And then I actually just used a piece of scrap cardstock, so I didn't actually cut this any specific length. What I had in mind was going above this one, but I knew how my photos were going to be, um, that I didn't need it all the way across. I can cut it into sections if need be. But I don't like how flat this is looking, so I'm actually going to tear the edges of these. This is the stamp set I'll be using for my embellishments. I've already stamped and colored a few of them, so I'll show you those here in a moment. But I wanted to point out this, this little border. It has some water waves and some trees, so what I actually ended up doing, let me just pull it out here. And then all of these in the teal come with die cuts, thin cuts. So these three um, pieces come with the coordinating thin cuts, which is awesome. But I wanted to show you this border piece. I actually did some stamp surgery and I cut it apart. It was one long one and I could put it back together again if I wanted to. But I found it easiest if I just stamped this half in blue, this half in green, lined it up and stamped it all as one rather than masking. I did try to mask it at first, but it just ended up being a lot. I would mask off this, get that in, and then I'd have to stamp that, peel off the masking, mask the other side, stamp it, and it got to be a lot. So I actually found out that just doing the surgery, cutting it in half, putting this one in my green ink, putting this one in my blue ink and stamping it just two at a time was really easy and I ended up going across some white daisy with that. So I love how that turned out. So what I'm thinking with those border strips is coming down here along that bottom. I could bring it up here and have it be like a transition piece but honestly it's gonna hide a lot of it coming down here I think that might look nice and have it go all the way across the pages and just have that extra element to tie together so that's that's going down there let's go ahead and move these once again and I'm going to do some paper tearing I am just going to tear along the side this one already has some fray so I'm going to tear this one and I just want a tiny little bit coming off and I'm going to tear it towards me. So I want to use the dark side of pine. If you're not familiar with Close to My Heart's cardstock, one side is the true color and then the other side is a lighter shade of that color. I want the true color of pine. So I'm going to have that face up. I'm grabbing the side, the edge and just tearing it towards me and that will reveal that white core. If I did not want to reveal the white core, I could cut a tear away from me, and as you can see, it's not revealing that. Some people aren't a huge fan of the white core. I personally love it for these techniques. I love being able to reveal that white core, and it really doesn't bother me. One, if I'm not revealing it, you can't even tell it's white hardly, so you could always ink around the edges and stuff too to hide more of that white core. Let's go ahead and tear this one. And then I am going to do the same with the sapphire. I'm going to tear that one as well on the dark side. If you like a more perfect look, you can always run a little bit of water. You could use like a water brush you could run a little bit of water across and tear, but the whole point of this is to rough it up, so I don't want it to look perfect. This might even kind of look like water waves. So I decided to mat some of my photos in Sundance just to bring in more of that yellow tone to, um, aside from just that border and my embellishments. Plus, 
As I had mentioned, I've seen a lot of these cluster style layouts. And what I've noticed is all the photos are touching. So I've brought them closer together and then these extra photo mats help to um, differentiate each photo, but then also help them to touch. So I did move this one down since it just has that white border and I didn't wanna bring in another brown or yellow since they're side by side. So instead of having that photo here, I brought it down and then I'll do some clustering over here. And then I was thinking of doing my title over here. Ideally, I wish I would have brought this entire cluster closer to the edge like I did these, um, but I thought I could add a little cluster here as well. So then I could do kind of my title cluster, a cluster here, a cluster up here. I might even include a cluster down here let me show you what I have for my embellishments. On this same Let's Kayak, this is the paddle. What I ended up doing to color this was taking some of my Sundance ink and the water pen and I painted with it. So I just um, put some ink down and then ran my water pen over that. And then this is another one off of there. And I did my circle, but as you can see, I got um, a sharp edge there. So I could cover that up with another embellishment. I have that life jacket from there. And I did the um, ink pen with my Sundance. And then I also did some painting with the sapphire. And then, I did some layering. So this is that little what's up. I didn't want that what's up here, um, but I did do some paper piecing. So I stamped it once in the Sundance and then once in the blue, the sapphire. And then I cut out the sun and glued him on top of that sun. So, and then I just fussy cut around it all, which I got a little off there. Okay, so then I fussy cut. Some pine trees I did the dark and the light side of pine and these were just die cuts in my stash so I figured I could kind of layer them have some dark and then have some light in front of them so I did both both shades of those and then I did cut out a couple tags and I'm actually thinking of bringing in this little compass and doing some tone on tone stamping with that onto one of these just to create more pattern. Um, I also have this so I could bring in more mocha and stamp that in mocha. I am going to do some stamping so I am actually just going to flip this versamat over and do the stamping right on here. So again, I want to bring in the sand Sundance, the Sapphire, maybe a little more pine and now that I brought in those mocha photo mats, I want to bring in some more mocha. We're going to bring in the Take a Hike. And I think I want to bring in this giant shoe. And this one. And then we'll do some tone-on-tone -tone stamping with that one. Let's bring in this one too. I have my bag of white scraps. So this one will fit on here. And I just like to season it first. You wanna leave a little bit of room for the die cut, since this does have a coordinating die cut, we'll just leave a little bit of extra space going around and give it a minute to soak in. That looks pretty dang good. Sky above, earth below, peace within. Sounds about right when you're hiking. And that one should fit right here. Again, just making sure I have enough room around the sides. This one you don't want to push down too hard because the letters are so small in between. You don't want the ink to bleed into the letters. 
which it kind of did a little bit on the below, but actually I think it's okay. These signs don't have to be perfect, right? We'll go ahead and get this one cleaned off. If you saw my haul video where I went through what I had purchased recently, the ink chamois was in there. And as you can tell, it's gotten a lot of use I, and I am loving it. It was worth every penny. I don't know how I went so long without it. Okay. This one, I want to do some masking. So what I am going to do is bring in just some washi tape. And I'm going to mask off the Take a Hike. Okay, so got the Take a Hike masked off. So now only the trees are showing and I did season those. So we'll go ahead and make sure those are good and inky. And then we will remove the mask. Stamp this down. Perfect. And then you want to make sure that your stamp is perfectly clean. You don't want any of that green left on there. Make sure your block is clean. Make sure it's dry. And then let's just bring in that mocha again. I think bringing in a little more mocha will help. And then we just need to mask this again. This time we're masking off the green, the trees. Okay, so we'll get the take a hike nice and inky in our mocha. That looks pretty good. We'll remove that masking now. And then because our block is clear, we can line the trees up together. There we go. And now we have a two-toned stamp. I want to do stamping onto this tag. And we're going to do tone on tone. So this is Sundance, and I'm going to bring in my Sundance ink. And I want it to look like pattern paper. So I'm intentionally going to stamp off and just kind of do some random stamping. I'm rotating. I brought in my scratch paper so that as I stamp it off, it can go onto there. All right, so we got some compasses. It looks like a nice little pattern paper there. And you know what? Let's do this water bottle too while we're at it. Piece of scratch paper here. And we're gonna do this one in yellow. I don't know why. I could do one in blue too. And then I can determine which one I want. One in blue, one in yellow, and then we might use them both, we might use neither. We can just play around with them. I like to have all of my embellishments ready to go. So then as I'm playing around, I can, I just have them all right there at my fingertips. And then these have the die cuts that go along. So I can do my water bottle. Here's that sign. Of course that shoe. And I stamp before I die cut. Some people do it the other way around. So I'm going to run these through my die cut machine. This one I'll need to fussy cut out, so I'll just use my micro tip scissors and cut around that. But the these other ones I'll run through my die cut machine. All right, here's my shoe and my water bottles. And then this one I'll go ahead and fussy cut out. What is easiest when you fussy cut is just to hold your scissors in one place and move around your, your paper, your stamped item. 
And then I like to leave just a little bit of the white going around, just like how the die cut leaves a white border. I like to leave that too. Plus, if you make a mistake, it's not as noticeable if that white border's there. I want the these tabs up here, these tags. And then I have this, the water is my happy place. That could go here. We need something to cover up. Remember how I said this was? So then I was thinking we could bring maybe our little sun in and cover that up. I might even want to bring in, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to bring in my sapphire ink and we're just gonna ink around these sides. I have some of these trees that could go This one's on the light side, so then I have one on the dark side. We have some of these trees. This could go down here and fill in this section. I'm picturing this paddle up here underneath my title, and now I'm just playing around with the clusters. So I'm trying to get some of the mocha, pine, yellow, blue, all in one. Um, cluster. I want each color in each cluster. This shoe is fairly large, so I'm not quite sure where I want it. I move it around quite a few times, but it will end up in the upper right hand cluster. I'm not 100% set on where all these embellishments are, but I did come up with a title, so I thought I'd start there. My title will read Spring is in the Air. This was our first time taking the paddle boards out on the lake this year, so spring is definitely in the air. I do have the little dots for the eyes here. So I'm thinking of doing something like this and I can kind of put my trees down here, kind of frame in that title. I also found while I was grabbing these, these are um, die cuts. So. While I was looking for those, I found this at the lake, and there's this lake sign. That might be a good one for this layout as well, and this lake life, but I already have spring is in the air, and then the water is my happy place, so I don't know that I need more words. Oh, and I have take a hike in this sign, so really I don't need more words. Um, I think I might stamp this lake though, and that might look good up here and bring in even more mocha. I went ahead and stamped that in mocha and cut that out. I don't like how these um, boards are white, so I'm going to bring in some tri-blend markers. This one's pretty close to that mocha. So I could do some earth browns and do some shading. Let's tr start with that lightest shade. I don't know how much blending I'll actually be doing with my tri-blend markers. Sometimes it's nice to just use the one color. So I'm just going over the entire thing with the lightest shade. And I don't know that it needs much. I could go over with the medium and just kind of highlight the edges. There, that looks pretty good. I'm not sure if that's staying there, but um, let's just do the same thing with this one. Let's just go over the whole thing with the light, and then we can kind of shade where the shadows would be with that medium. The mocha ink is water-based rather than solvent-based, so I need to be careful when I'm coloring with my tri-blend markers. Um, if I do hit that ink, it will bleed, it will reactivate. So I am being careful to go around those inked letters. I got all of this cluster glued down. And I know this is a kayak and we're on paddle boards, but it doesn't need to be literal. 
Um, I just tucked this little guy, the life jacket, down in here. It's kind of fun to just be able to find everything in that cluster. So I included him. I am going to grab some twine to fill in my holes on these tags. I got this cluster adhered. I like how this overlaps and it's just kind of, it blends in with the background, but it just kind of finishes that section. I do wish that this corner looked a little cleaner. I might need to cut out something yellow to go in that section. I'm not sure yet what could go here, but I might do something yellow there. I am going to work on this cluster. I got this adhered as well. I'm going to work on this cluster and this is what I'm thinking. I want kind of these to be held down by this um, paddle and then the lake to be overlapping the picture and those. So something like that. And then spring is in the air. And I am going to use my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue to adhere the letters down. And then I've just been using my regular tape runner for all of these pieces. So I'll go ahead and get that adhered. You don't need to watch me do all of that. I will probably use my T-square ruler to latch onto here and make sure everything stays straight as I adhere. Out of that same stamp set that we stamped all of these hiking embellishments out of, I stamped a map and a compass. This is the same compass that we did this pattern paper with. So I thought I could tuck one of these in over here. The compass might be a little too small the map might be a little too big, but I just thought this corner needed something and I thought yellow would be the best. Maybe if I lift those trees up a little, I have my little Cricut spatula. Works great to lift up embellishments that are already adhered. I brought out, out of my perfectly imperfect stamp set, I have this little splatter. I thought adding some splatters around these embellishments would look good. I'm not sure how much I'll do over in this area, but for sure this embellishment cluster. So I have my sapphire ink. Just a few more splatters to fill in here. Maybe one right over here. I'll just add some twine from my stash to finish off these tags. I don't like to leave the holes empty. So for that other tag, I'm just going to cut a piece of that twine and then I like to make the loop and put the loop through the hole first and then slide the end of the strings through that loop. Okay. If you have a piercing tool, that would work great to separate these as well, but I don't know where mine is. I think I have one somewhere around here, but these tweezers are super sharp, so they work good for this. I don't know what I would do without these tweezers. For this particular layout, I'm really liking how the frayed twine looks. Without meaning to, I have used all cardstock. I have not used any pattern paper on this double page layout. Um, we created our own pattern paper here. We used tons of stamps. Stamps, die cuts, um, did some fussy cutting. So. We've done a lot to this layout without any pattern paper. So if you're running low on pattern paper, if you don't have the pattern paper to match your pictures, don't fret over it. Make your own pattern paper. Use what you have, cardstock. You can add some tearing to add some detail. You don't need the pattern paper to add the detail. You can do different techniques to your cardstock. So this page was really fun to put together. I really enjoyed playing with all of the embellishments. I usually don't go this heavy on embellishments, but I'm kind of glad I did. I enjoyed it. Let's take a closer look here. So these are all die cut letters. And then we have the die cut trees just from my stash. We have that watercolored. We used our um, water brush to color that in with ink. We've done some tri-blend markering on this stamp. We popped up this tree. We did some stamping to make our own pattern paper. We added some splatter stamps. We've added some twine. 
again we did those um, die cuts we could have stamped that directly onto the page but this is actually a die cut as well we popped up this circle we did some stamping and um, layering on that one so we cut him out of yellow we cut the board out of that blue and then we glued him on and then all of this is stamping we've done so much stamping on this you don't even realize until you start looking at it and wow these are all stamps no stickers no pattern paper <laughs> If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, and if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe to my channel. It really helps my channel grow. Thanks for watching, and until next time, live a life worth scrapping. Bye, guys.